In this video, we're going to review how we can format text in Obsidian. First, you should know that Obsidian is essentially a markdown editor. As introduced in my previous video, markdown is a lightweight markup language that you can use to add formatting elements to plain text documents. So we'll be using symbols like asterisk, underscore, and hash signs to format our text. Here we have a note page that's been pre-filled in with some text that we can use to go over our formatting options. In the first section, we have emphasis, so things like bold and italic. So we have our first sentence here. If we want to bold this entire sentence, we can either use two asterisks or two underscores in front of the sentence. This will bold the entire sentence. If you want it to bold just the word within a sentence, you can put two asterisks in front of the word and after the word. So you'll notice that when you put your cursor over the text phrase or sentence where the markup language has been applied, you can actually see the markup symbols. But as soon as you move your cursor away from that section, you're only seeing the rendered formatted text. This is actually super convenient because it used to be that in the old version of Obsidian, you had to toggle back and forth between the reading and editing mode so that in the editing mode, you enter your markup symbols, and then in the reading mode, you can see the rendered text. But now you can work in one window without having to worry about toggling back and forth. Okay, moving on to italic now. If you want to italicize an entire sentence, you can just put one asterisk or underscore in front of the sentence. And if you want to italicize a word, same as before, just put one asterisk in front and one after the word. And you can do this with phrases as well, right? So I can put, let's use underscore this time, one in front of sentence and one after includes. Now that phrase is italicized. And of course, you can apply both bold and italic to a text by combining the markdown symbols, right? So I'm going to put one to italicize and two to bold. And again, if you want to do this with a specific word, I can put one asterisk to italicize, two to bold. Right, so that's three in total. And I can do the same thing here. And that way, just the word apply is now italicized and bolded. And to be fair, for simple formatting like bold and italics, you can actually just select the word and hit Control B and Control I. That will automatically apply the markup symbols. But I found that it really only works with bold and italics. Moving on to headers now. For the top level header, you can apply one hash symbol space for the second level, two space, so on and so forth. Okay, for lists, for unnumber lists, you want to put a dash, then space. That'll put a bullet. And then when you hit enter after your first item on the list, it'll automatically create a bullet for the second items on the list. So on and so forth. Okay. And if you want to indent a listed item, you just have to tab over. And then if you hit shift tab, that'll outdent so you could continue on with the main list. Number lists are really easy. You just have to put one period and then your first item. Go to the end, hit enter. It'll automatically apply the second item on the list. enter, so on and so forth. 
task list. This is interesting. You start out as you were starting an unnumbered list. So dash space and then open bracket space close bracket. That'll put a check mark on the list. You can close this check mark by just clicking on it and you'll see that the entire item has been striked through. I'm going to uncheck it. Another option is to actually go into the markup code and then just entering something within the brackets. So it could be any word, but I'm going to put X here and removing the space. And similar to the other list, you can hit enter and it'll keep creating the checkbox. Okay, if you want to strike through a text, you can just put two tilde sign in front of it. If you want to highlight, put two equal sign. If you want to create a separation between sections, you can actually put insert a horizontal bar by hitting three dashes. You can also use three stars or three underscores. You can insert block quotes by using this symbol here. So I want to attribute this quote to Confucius by hitting hyphen and Confucius. But as you recall, if I put hyphen and space, that makes a bullet and I don't want a bullet. I just want to maintain the hyphen. So what I did was put this slash in front of the hyphen that negates the markup symbol. So anything that's following the slash will not be interpreted as a markup. So callouts are very similar to block quotes. Start with the greater than symbol, space, open bracket, exclamation, info, close bracket, space. And that brings us to the end for this tutorial on basic formatting. I hope you found it helpful. See you in the next video. Mm -hmm.